What's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this relatively interesting video, you'll learn how to build OBS Studio from the source code. Unfortunately or fortunately, I won't be going through too many of the specifics. I'll just be running through in a basic crash course. Why? Well, because I'm building a project of my own. I'm making a couple of changes to OBS Studio that I'm going to share with the community. And having a build guide video is relatively useful if you'd like to build it from source code yourself. So that's exactly what this is. In the description down below, you'll find a link to GitHub's official wiki. On the obsproject.com website, we have install instructions for OBS Studio. And under Windows, we have build from source. This is what we'll be running through in this video, so have this page open in front of you now. You'll obviously need Visual Studio 2019, and of course you'll need a couple of other things downloaded. So VS 2019, the Windows 10 SDK, minimum of 10.0, etc, etc, and there's a link to the latest SDK. Then I'd recommend installing this using the Visual Studio installer, then locating 2019, modify, head across to the individual components tab at the very top, and inside of here we'll be scrolling all the way down to the bottom, where we'll see the Windows 10 SDKs. All we need to do is find 19041.0, 19041.0. So I've got this installed and later versions as well. Though they do say a minimum, maybe it'll work with later ones, maybe not. All I know is that the project itself builds and I'm happy with that. Then you obviously need to get installed in order to actually pull it. You get get installed when you install GitHub Desktop or you can click the link here to download it and install it yourself. Next up is CMake, which will be used for the first half of building the actual project itself. You'll be downloading CMake and you'll be using the GUI. So head across to CMake, download latest release, locate Windows Installer, run it, and eventually you'll be able to open up CMake GUI, which looks something like this over here. We'll be coming back to this in just a moment. Then we'll need a couple of dependencies to actually build the project. We need this zip over here containing build resources, basically the development packages of FFmpeg, X264, curl, and embed TLS. Then we need to download Qt5, which we'll use this link over here. Then the Chrome embedded framework wrapper, and I'll download the 64-bit version as I won't be building a 32-bit version of this program today. Now that they've all downloaded, all we need to do is extract them all into a folder that we can get to later. In the GitHub repos folder of mine, created by GitHub Desktop, is where I'll be placing the actual files itself. You can see I have an OBS Studio folder and an OBS Studio Depths folder, which I'll be placing all of these dependencies into. For this guide video, I'll be recreating all of these files here. So I'll be placing all of the OBS files into OBS Studio and all of these dependencies into OBS Studio Depths. It's not too important where you place them, I just have it as such. So we'll open up the three files that we downloaded, the dependencies.zip, and extract these files into this folder as such. Now, of course, you'll need to select either 32 or 64, depending on which version of OBS you're building. And of course, this page over here has far more information on that than I'll be able to provide you with. I'll only be building the 64-bit version in this video, so most of the steps here you can use in your own build if you'd like to build a 32 as well. Then I'll be extracting Qt next, which I'll once again open up, and you see two files inside of it, 32 and 64. And finally, the Chrome Embedded Framework. I'll open it up, there's a folder inside of it and just a bunch of files. So we'll extract this folder into our already created dependencies folder as such. Now don't get too confused, MSVC 2019 is the Qt folders when 32 and 64 are the OBS dependencies folders and Ceph binary is the Chrome embedded framework folder. Cool, now that we have that all done, let's start by cloning the current OBS Studio GitHub repo. I'll copy the link over here, or of course you can clone it using any other method. You can simply create an OBS Studio folder, open up a command prompt window in it, I did that by typing cmd into the bar at the top, and then enter the command in here if you have git installed. It'll start pulling objects and the rest from the GitHub OBS Studio project and placing them into your folder here. It seems like it's placed them inside of a subfolder, so I'll probably move everything up one folder, but I'll do that when this is done. And there we go, now the project's being cloned, I'm going to go ahead and move it all up one folder. I guess you didn't need to create a folder for it as such. It creates a subfolder itself. Anyway, I now have the OBS Studio files downloaded and we're ready to start. We can skip this step as we downloaded using the command line. Creating these subfolders is also required. Release, debug, and build. So I'll go back to the folder, Control shift n to make a new file. Release, debug, build. Now that we've made these three folders, we'll be using the CMake GUI. So I'll open it up 
and at the very top where it says, where is the source code, we'll be pasting in the source codes folder. Copy the link at the top and paste it in here as such. Then where to build the binaries, we'll be copying and pasting it in again, and we'll be pasting a forward slash, then selecting the build folder we just created. Next up, we're gonna set a bunch of different variables. I recommend you set all of them now, and if you mess up somewhere along the line, you will need to click a couple of different options. So we'll be copying depth's path, and inside of here, we'll be clicking add entry, adding the name, change the type to path, and I'll locate it in my folder. Here's the dependencies folder, and we're looking for Win32 or Win64. I'll be building the 64-bit version, so I'll select that, paste it into the value, and then click OK. Then we're entering the Qt directory, msvc2019 or 2019 So once again, add entry, change the type to path, we'll be selecting the correct folder, which in this case is msvc2019.64. We'll paste in the value, then click OK. Finally, we'll be setting the Chrome Embedded Framework folder. So add entry, paste, we'll change it to path, and we'll open up the folder here and simply copy it in as such. Nice and simple. Now that we're done with that, we have an optional setting down here if we'd like to use the virtual camera. I'll be showing you how to set this up as you may want to use it. You'll need to uninstall your existing virtual camera driver install and install the one that we just built with the project when we're done with this. Don't worry about it, we'll get to that later on. For now, we'll add this in here just in case we'd like to use it. So add entry, paste it in, type will change to string this time and we'll be generating a GUID. You can simply use Visual Studio or you can search create GUID, click the first link, generate some GUIDs and copy it from whatever website you used. It's that simple. I'll paste in the value and OK. Now we're basically done here. From here on, it's some information about the dependencies and right below it we have the next step. All we're going to do is press configure in the CMake GUI and make sure it fits our installed Visual Studio version. If you do choose to build the 32 and 64 bit version, you'll need to change the dependency folders somewhere above here. I'm not too sure what will happen there, but I'm only building the 64 bit version. So for now, I can ignore that. All we're going to do is click configure in the bottom left after setting all four of these. I'll leave it as VS 2019 and finish. Seems like it forgot the path at the top. Uh, there we go, configure. And there we go, configuration is now done. All we need to do is click generate to actually create the project files. Now that that's done, inside of the folder where our project files are for OBS Studio, the build folder will now have some files inside of it. And here, all we need to do is open up obsstudio.solution. There's not too much else that we need from this page over here. There's just some more information on the project itself. Other than that, we're practically done. From here on out, it's just working with Visual Studio. All you need to do really is select the correct version at the top, debug, min size, release, release, release with debug info. I'll choose release for this and then x64 or 86. But of course, I'm only building the 64 bit version. So there's only one there now. I'll right click the solution over here on the right hand side and then I'll click build solution. Upon doing this, it'll run through all of the files and build the project itself. It's that simple. Now, of course, there may be some way to automate building the 32-bit version as well, maybe selecting folders differently and following the guide a bit closer, but by following this here, you'll have yourself a 64-bit version of OBS working just fine. And to be honest, that's really all you need. Most computers nowadays that will be recording using OBS will be using 64-bit processors. If you have more than four gigs of RAM in your computer, you definitely have one already. And there we go, the build is now complete. I'll minimize Visual Studio, head back into the build folder here, and inside of run dir, you'll find your builds over here. In my case, it's a release. We have bin data OBS plugins. I'll open up the bin folder, 64 bit, and we have OBS 64 over here. Opening it up, I, you can already see I have OBS running, and then OBS opens up here. You'll notice that the title at the top looks very different to the current title of OBS, which will be just OBS followed by the version number. If you have a custom build, it'll have the build information over here. It's the last bit of the commit that was last sent to it. So that's basically what it would be. Other than that, it's pretty much going to keep all of your already set settings. It keeps stream keys, options, etc, etc. Everything works exactly as you would have hoped. So anyways, hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you're curious about what project I was working on and what I'll be changing in it, check the description down below. Basically, I'm lifting the audio bitrate limit from 320 all the way up to 1024 and changing the recording bit depth all the way up to 192 and 96 instead of a max of 48 kilohertz. 
I'm running a build like this currently. And if you'd like to get it yourself, check the description down below. I'll probably also have pre-build binaries there. I'm not too sure about licenses, but I'm sure it should be fine. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. My name's been Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.